Hey, God bless you. Welcome to my channel. I'm excited for today's video because I know that God's going to bless your life. The theme of today's video is this, 15 promises that God will never break in your life. So make sure you pay attention because I know that you're going to leave this video with a great blessing. You're going to leave more encouraged. You're going to leave more bold and you're going to leave more excited of your Christian life after watching this video because I know that in the Christian life, sometimes we can kind of get low, we can kind of get discouraged, but these 15 promises, and believe me, there's much more, but these 15 promises, God will never break them in your life. So pay attention. And this is where I get the inspiration from this study, from this video. Look what the Bible says here, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 through 22. The apostle Paul is speaking to the church of Corinth, and he's reminding them of the promises of God. And look what he says here, as surely as God is faithful, our word to you has not been yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, whom we proclaimed among you, Sylvanus and Timothy and I, was not yes and no, but in him it is always yes. He's speaking about the promises of God to this church. He's letting them know, well, you know, you came up to us sometimes and asked us, well, will God forgive me of this? Will God help me of this? And we never said yes and no. No, we always told you yes. He's talking about the promises of God. And look what he continues to say. He says this, verse 20, for all the promises of God, listen, for all, I love that, Let, pay attention, for all the promises of God find their yes, not a no, for all the promises of God find their yes in him, in who? In Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, you have all the promises of God, and in this video, I'm going to say 15 promises that God will never break in your life after I read this verse, so keep paying attention because God's going to bless your life. For in him, all the promises of God find their yes. That is why it is through him that we utter our amen. The word amen means I agree. So what they're saying is every time we hear the promise of God or every time we're ministering to you, Paul is speaking to the church of Corinth. He's letting them know. That's why every time we're preaching to you, we always say amen. Like in other words, do you agree? Because we agree. Amen means I agree. So the Bible says all the promises that we utter are amen to God for his glory. It is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us. All the promises of God are yes in your life. And look what verse 22 says. And who has also put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. That word guarantee literally also means a down payment. So the Bible is saying God's promises in your life are yes and amen, which mean I agree. And the Bible says that the proof of God that his promises are yes in your life is that he's giving you the Holy Spirit. Why would God give you the Holy Spirit if he doesn't mean to keep his promises? The Holy Spirit in your life is God's down payment. I remember one time I was buying a car and I was looking into the car and I called the dealership, but they said, hey, if you wanna get this car or if you want us to hold it for you to come see it, I wasn't even gonna buy it. I just wanted to go see it. But they told me, hey, if you wanna come see it, you gotta give a down payment. In other words, that down payment was a proof that I was gonna show up. Now that's just a small example, but look what God is saying. Look what the Apostle Paul tells us through scripture. He says, God gave you his Holy Spirit as a down payment. In other words, I am purchasing you. I did purchase you. I did forgive you. I have washed you and cleansed you. Why would God give us his Holy Spirit if he didn't mean to bless our lives? Why would God give you his Holy Spirit if he didn't mean to save you? If he didn't mean to forgive you? If he didn't mean to take you to heaven with him one day? If he didn't mean to help you here on earth? Why would God give you his Holy Spirit as a down payment? Now listen to these promises. I wrote them down. Now listen, there's much more promises, many more promises, but these are just 15 promises that stood out in my mind. And I want you to know that God will never, ever, ever break any of these promises that I found in his word. He'll never, ever break them. So pay attention. Look at God's promises. They're always yes. They're never no. Listen to the first promise. There's 15 of them. He will never leave you or forsake you. Jesus said, I will be with you to the ends of the earth. What you're going through, the scenarios where you might be, places you might have to move to, things in your life you're going through. He says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. That was Jesus. That's what he said. He said, I will be with you unto the ends of the earth. The second promise, he will give you rest. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are tired and heavy labored and pressed down by this world. I will give you rest. Are you pressed down by sin? 
Are you pressed down by anxiety? Are you pressed down by fear? Are you pressed down by whatever it might be pressing you down, bitterness, anger, whatever it might be pressing you down, financial troubles, physical troubles, whatever it might be, are you pressed down? God wants to give you rest. He said, take my yoke, my yoke is easy to carry. Give him your yoke. Give him your burdens. He promises he will give you rest. So he promises he'll never leave you. He will be with you to the ends of the earth. He promises you that he's going to give you rest. Let's read the third promise. You will bear much fruit. There's a lot of people who feel that they're not going to do anything in the things of God. They feel like they're not going to be productive, fruitful in the things of the Lord. But he promises you will bear much fruit. The Bible says this. Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who stay attached to me will bear much fruit. Why will you bear much fruit? Because of your holiness, because of your righteousness? No, you will bear much fruit, the Bible says, because it's God's glory for you to bear much fruit. Because when Jesus was here, he bore much fruit and you are the children of God. So God's will for your life is that you also bear much fruit. So he will never leave you or forsake you. He will be with you to the ends of the earth. He will give you rest. You will bear much fruit. I want to tell you that you're not just going to always stay in that repetitive cycle. You're not always just going to stay in that same mistake. You're not always going to stay barren. You will bear much fruit. That's a promise that he will never break. Let's keep going to the next promise. He is faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins. Are you in sin? Do you have a sin? Have you have have you been backsliding in a sin? Have you been in a repetitive cycle? Or is there a sin that's condemning you? Is there a sin that's weighing you down? The Bible says that he will forgive you of all your sins if you confess your sins to him. I want to tell you that when Jesus Christ gave his life for you on the cross, there wasn't one sin that slipped. There wasn't one sin that slipped through the cracks. All the sins of mankind that could have ever been committed. Jesus Christ paid the price for them on that cross. Let's keep reading the promises of the Lord. He will forgive you. He is faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins. Look at this next promise. The gates of hell will not prosper over you. I want you to believe that. This is a promise of God that he will never break. The gates of hell. That includes the devil. That includes demons. That includes witchcraft. That includes any demonic thing, any demonic dream. People are always so focused on the demonic. The Bible says the gates of hell will not prosper over you. Jesus one day sent his disciples to go do miracles and they came back so happy. Oh, even the demons are cast out when we proclaim your name. Jesus stopped them right there and said, hey, 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 I saw the devil fall like lightning from heaven. Do not rejoice that the demons even listen when you speak in my name, but rejoice that your name is written in the kingdom of heaven. Demons have no power over you. The devil has no power over you. The gates of hell will not prosper over you. Jesus told Peter, he said, and everyone who stands on this rock, the gates of hell will not be able to prosper over them. The gates of hell means like all of hell's army. I want you to know that all of hell's army cannot do anything when you're standing in Jesus Christ. That is a promise of the Lord. It will never be broken. The gates of hell, the devil, his demons, his entire army will not be able to prosper over you because you are a child of God. Let's continue to read. These promises are good. Look what the Bible keeps saying. Look at these promises that I found through the word of God. He would take care of your earthly needs. He would take care of the food you need, the shelter you need. Jesus said, look at the birds. They neither plant nor sow. He says, and I take care of them. The Bible says that he's going to take care of your earthly needs. He said, if I take care of the birds that don't plant or sow, how much more ain't I going to take care of you? I want you to know that Jesus is going to take care of your earthly needs, of your food, of your shelter. He's going to take care of those needs. One day the disciples were discussing among themselves that they didn't have bread. And Jesus rebuked them and said, hey, why are you discussing among yourselves that you don't have bread? Don't you remember when we fed the 4,000? Don't you remember when we fed the 5,000? And don't you remember? that there was even baskets left over he was telling them don't be worried about the food that you're gonna eat i'm gonna supply your food that's a promise of the lord he will supply all your needs let me give you a quick testimony when my family first got saved my father was addicted to drugs and he went into a christian ministry to to, for the lord can change his life and it was a six months ministry and he learned how to pray he learned how to he learned how to seek the lord he learned how to bible study he learned all those things it was a discipleship ministry But for those six months, I was only three and a half years old. My brother was one and a half. My sister was 10 years old. My mom, she wasn't working at the time. And for those six months, my father was the only provider, but he was in that ministry getting restored by the Lord. But I want to tell you for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ, he went in December 15th of of 1991. Till this day, that Christmas has been the most blessed Christmas 
We didn't need anything. God provided everything. My father was in the ministry, being restored by the Lord. God provided food. God provided presents. God provided bicycles. I mean, I was only three and a half years old, but I remember I saw God provide everything that we needed those entire six months. And that Christmas to this day was the most blessed Christmas in the sense of presence. Till this day. Let me tell you, God loves to show up and God loves to show out. He's always going to supply all your needs. That's a promise of the Lord. Look what else these promises continue to say. He will satisfy you. The Bible says, blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They will be satisfied. Are you hungry for the Lord? Do you want to know more of the Lord? Do you want to grow in faith? You're being hungry. You're being thirsty for the Lord. The Bible says, blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. That's a promise of the Lord. He will satisfy you. Look at this next promise. You will inherit the earth. The Bible says, blessed are the meek. The meek ain't weak. I want to tell you that. The Bible says, blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Sometimes you might feel like people always put you down. Sometimes you might feel like, man, that's enough of me humbling myself. That's enough of me turning the other cheek. No, don't be robbed of your blessing. The Bible says the meek will inherit the earth. The meek are not weak. The meek are not people who get stepped on. The meek are people who are submitted to the Lord. And yes, we turn the other cheek. Yes, we're humble. But we're not doing it because we're scared of people. And we're not doing it because we're letting somebody like the world says punk us. No, we're doing it because we're submitted to the Lord. We fear God more than we fear man. So we're turning the other cheek. We're being humble. We're blessing our enemies. We're praying for those who persecute us. We're being meek. A meek person is a person who's weak in pride. Somebody who's rich in the Lord and weak in pride. And the Bible says, blessed are the meek. For they will inherit the earth. The Bible says you will inherit the earth. Look what these promises continue to say. He is with the brokenhearted. The Bible says blessed are the brokenhearted. For they are near to God. I want to tell you. Are you brokenhearted right now? God is near to you. And that's a promise of the Lord. God is always near the brokenhearted. You are not alone. God is right there. In the Bible, you know, Jesus is compared to a shepherd. And many times shepherds in the Bible, when a little lamb would get injured, the shepherd would pick up that lamb and put it on his shoulders. And the shepherd would walk around with that little lamb. Let me tell you, are you spiritually injured? Are you physically injured? Are you emotionally injured? Are you mentally going through a struggle right now? I want to tell you that God's not far from you. God is carrying you. He is with the brokenhearted. Thank you, Jesus, for these promises. Let's keep listening. There's 15. There's many more in the Bible, but these 15s are just the ones that stood out to me, the ones that I wrote down on this paper. These are promises that God will never break. He is with the brokenhearted. He will return for us. Jesus said, I will return for you. In my Father's house, there are many rooms. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, yes, but he's coming back again one day. He's coming back again one day to take us up to heaven. Don't lose track of that. That is one of his promises. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. The Bible says that no weapon formed against you, no tongue that rises up against you shall prosper. That is a promise of the Lord. The devil can try to scheme. The devil can try to connive. The devil can try to make up these these makeshift bootleg weapons against you. They will not prosper. He might try to throw those flaming darts to you. He might try to throw those lies to you, that fear to you, those temptations to you. They will not prosper. That is a blessing of the Lord. That is a promise of God. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Look what else these promises continue to say. We are blessed and cannot be cursed. There was a false prophet named Balaam one time, and he was trying to curse God's people. But God said, no, I blessed them. And whoever I bless, you cannot curse. Whoever I call blessed, you cannot curse. I want to tell you that when you receive Jesus Christ, you are blessed and cannot be cursed. There's no devil, no demon, no person. There's no witchcraft. There's nothing that can curse you. You are blessed through Jesus Christ. Listen, and you cannot be cursed curse. Let's keep reading these promises. He orders our steps. The Bible says that God orders the steps of a righteous person. You are not living an aimless life. The Bible says that a righteous person, somebody who puts their faith in Jesus Christ, God is guarding your steps. God is watching everywhere you step. The Bible says that he delivers us from the hand of the one who sets the trap. King David said, you made my path wide so that my foot would not slip. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. God is always with you. He's walking with you. He's ordering your steps. He pays attention to the life you live. You're not alone. Let's keep reading these promises. The battle is his. That's a promise of the Lord. The Bible says the battle is the Lord's. Remember when Joshua was fighting Jericho? He couldn't defeat Jericho. God defeated Jericho. The Bible says that the battle is the Lord's. God will give you the victory. That is a promise of God. These promises, 
God will never break them. Now, the last one, the 15th promise. And remember, there's many more promises in the word of God, but these are just 15 that stood out to me. God will never break these promises. The 15th promise, all things are possible. Mountains will move. Remember when Jesus said that those who have faith, even as small as a mustard seed, they can tell that mountain to be thrown into the sea and it will be thrown into the sea. I want to tell you there's no problem. There's no scenario. There's no sin. There's no temptation. There's no struggle. Oh, because I know you got struggles sometimes, but there's no mountain that seems too difficult to climb that God won't move it from your life. That is a promise from the Lord. When you have faith, even as small as a mustard seed, those mountains will move. Those are promises of the Lord. And the Bible says that all the promises of God are always yes in Jesus Christ. 15 promises that God will never break. I hope this video was a great blessing to your life. Continue to walk in faith. Believe these promises. They are always yes in Jesus Christ. Why else would he give you his Holy Spirit? Why else would he send his son Jesus to pay the price for you on the cross if he wasn't going to keep his promises? All his promises are yes in Jesus Christ. If this video was a blessing to your life, do me a favor. I post two videos a week. So if you're not subscribed, subscribe and turn on those bell notifications so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. And like always, if you want to show your appreciation for these videos, you can do so by giving a super thanks. It's a small feature at the bottom of this video. Those are greatly appreciated. Those are a great blessing in my life. Thank you. God bless you. I see you soon, Lord willing. God's promises are always yes in your life.